In this problem, we have three arms linked together. We have arm AB at a 45 degree angle, arm BC with an intricate shape, and arm CD vertical. We're given the dimensions of these arms, and we know that arm AB and BC have a set angular velocity. We're asked to find the angular velocity of arm CD and the location of the instantaneous center of zero velocity of arm BC. So first of all, we're going to start with the diagram. And we're going to draw the velocities and our coordinate system on this diagram. So our coordinate system will be located at A. So the x direction will be to the right, the y direction will be vertical, and our rotation will be positive in the counterclockwise direction. So everything will be with respect to this point. Then um, we're going to draw in the velocities. So we're given an angular velocity that is negative of omega AB. So negative meaning it is going to be in the clockwise direction uh, as drawn in this green arrow and this we're going to label omega AB. This will cause a linear velocity at point B which is perpendicular to this um, arm uh, AB and this we'll call VB. Okay. Uh, and again, all of the omegas will be um, in the positive or negative k-hat direction, so in and or out of the page. Um, and therefore, um, this linear velocity here will be um, partly in the, it'll be in the x-y plane, but partly along x and partly along y. Then um, we can also assume an angular velocity for link CD. So in this case, we'll, we will assume a velocity that is, again, uh, clockwise. So this is omega uh, dc. Um, and again, this will cause a velocity that is going to be uh, along the negative x direction, which we'll call vc. Um, and this is assumed, again, because we don't know the direction or the magnitude of this uh, angular velocity. But since we assumed it to be in this direction, if it's negative, then we will switch the sign and it'll, uh, instead of being clockwise, it'll be counterclockwise. We're just assuming a direction for now uh, to solve the problem. Uh, so these will be the two uh, linear velocities that we're interested in, so at points B and point C. And now we can find the instantaneous center of velocity, which will be key in solving, uh, in, in getting the solution uh, for this problem. Well, we're asked this instantaneous center of velocity, we're asked to solve for that, but we're also asked to solve for omega BC, uh, or, or omega CD, which is, which we need this in, instantaneous center of velocity. So the instantaneous center of velocity, again, um, in a body with uh, a body, a rigid body, has um, that is rotating, has a point somewhere in space um, about which uh, there is no uh, translation. Uh, there is no velocity. Uh, so there, about that point, um, the velocity will be zero. Therefore, this is the instantaneous center of zero velocity, also known as ICZV. And this doesn't have to be on the body. It can be in a location outside of the body. Um, but the way we find this is by uh, drawing lines perpendicular to the to two velocities uh, on two different points of the uh, this rigid body. So in this case, we have these two velocities, VB and VC, and we can draw two lines perpendicular to these um, velocities. So this is one and this is the other one um, and these two lines are going to intersect somewhere and wherever they intersect this is called our instantaneous center of zero velocity. And we're asked to find this location but we will also need to use this um, to solve for um, omega cd. So again um, we need this because when we define our angular or linear velocity, we need to is defined as v equals to omega c cross um, r. This is the main equation that we use for uh, changing in between linear velocity v um, and uh, angular velocity. Um, again, this is a cross product, um, so this is why everything um, is um, perpendicular. Um, it's like this way when we have an omega in this direction, this velocity will just be perpendicular to this radius because omega is in the k hat direction. Um, this is, um, and these two will have to be perpendicular due to the cross product having three perpendicular vectors. Um, now, um, going back to this instantaneous center of zero velocity, um, this formula can only be, this radius here in this um, formula is applied from the instantaneous center of zero velocity to a location of the body that has uh, velocity. Um, so in the case of these hinges, the instantaneous center of velocity is going to be at those um, at the hinge, so at the pin uh, joint. Um, and that's because um, that point has no velocity. Um, but with this um, Z-shaped um, 
body, um, this instantaneous center of the velocity will actually be over here, away from the body. Um, and therefore, we're going to apply this formula with the radii starting from here and going to the desired locations of which we want the velocities. Uh, so let's actually dive into the um, solution. So uh, first of all, we're going to define VB. So VB is going to be equal to, um, again, omega of AB, which is given. Uh, cross product to the radius of uh, b with respect to, to a. And this radius here is, um, so we know both of these, so omega a b is going to be negative 3 k hat, uh, negative 3 in the k hat direction, uh, and r of b with respect to a is going to have uh, cosine and sine components uh, times 0 0.5, which is the length of a b. Uh, so I'm just going to write it out, negative 0 0.5 uh, cos of 45 degrees in the i hat direction, and negative 0 0.5 sine of 45 degrees in the j hat direction. And again, to confirm these numbers, we see that this, so this radius starts here and ends at b. So this has a negative j component and a negative i component based on this coordinate system. And so this matches. And we can actually solve for this cross product and get um, a velocity of b. Um, so velocity of b will be equal to 1.5 times cos of 45 degrees in the j hat direction uh, minus sine of 45 degrees in the i hat direction. And this is VB. Then we're going to solve for VC on the opposite side. Um, so based on omega CD, which again is an unknown. We assumed a direction, um, but it's unknown. Uh, we are going to be solving for it. So again, we're going to write the same exact equation. Uh, Vc is going to be equal to um, omega cd cross r of c with respect to d. And um, again, we don't know omega c with respect to d, but we've given it a direction, and it's in the k hat direction, in the positive k hat direction. Uh, so we're going to write that in omega c d in the k hat direction, cross product to negative 0 0.5 j hat. And again, negative 0 0.5 because it's downwards, because the radius uh, starts from here and goes down. Uh, so it's in the negative j hat direction, and 0 0.5 is the length. Uh, so we can actually solve for this, and this is just going to be 0 0.5 omega cd in the i hat direction. And so again, we don't know vc because it's a function of omega cd. Um, but we're going to use this in our equations and solve for this. Instead of vb, we know fully. There's no constants in here. We don't have to solve for anything. We know the actual value. Um, so now we're going to move on to uh, the middle body, so body bc. And uh, again, as I said before, Bef uh, we need to take all. We need to apply this formula with respect to the i c z v, um, just like we did for these two equations, right? Um, this r of b with respect to a is the radius of from the i c z v, so from this pin joint to point b, and from this pin joint to point c. Um, again, we're going to be using the same concept in link b c, but this link is going to be and is going to need to account for this ICZV location. Um, so we're going to, again, we have these two locations and we're going to analyze both because we have two unknowns. Um, so um, we're going to focus on both locations and you'll see why we need both. So we're going to solve for VC uh, in terms of the body BC and its angular velocity. So VC will be equal to omega BC Cross the radius of c with respect to the i c z v location. Okay, and we can simplify this um, by plugging in these values. So again, uh, v c we solve for over here. It's an i hat direction, uh, and in terms of omega c d, and then we have omega b c, which is a given in the problem, and then this radius um, we know that its direction, but we don't know its magnitude. So that's what we're solving for. Uh, so we can rewrite this equation as 0 0.5 omega cd in the i hat direction is equal to 3 root 2 over 4 k hat direction cross product to r of c with respect to ic, the instantaneous center of velocity. So this radius here um, would be the radius that starts from here and points to location c. 
And similarly, we can do this for point B. Uh, so VB is going to be equal to uh, omega BC cross product over the radius of B with respect to the ICZV. And um, this is a bit more complex um, because this radius here is not at a 40, is not vertical, it's going to be at a 45 degree angle, so it's a bit more complex um, math. Um, but again, we know this VB, which is solved, we solved for over here. Uh, there's no constants. Um, and we know this, so we can directly solve for this distance over here. So we're going to use this equation here to solve for this radius of B with respect to IC. Uh, and then we can go back and uh, solve for this radius, which then gives us our velocity, oh my, angular velocity of C with CD. So let's solve this equation. Let's plug in everything we have. So we know that VB is 1.5 uh, times cos of 45 degrees in the J hat direction minus sine of 45 degrees in the I hat direction. And this is equal to 3 root 2 over 4 in the K hat direction. And this is going to be a cross product with R of B with respect to IC, uh, cos of 45 degrees in the I hat direction plus R of B with respect to IC, uh, sine of 45 degrees in the J hat direction. Okay, and again, uh, this is because this is at a 45 degree angle because this line here is aligned with this segment AB. Uh, but this time, the signs are positive because this points up um, and to the right, not down and to the left like the radius did before. So these two here are positive. Okay, and now we can solve for, we can solve the cross product and solve for R of B with respect to IC. So in the I hat direction, uh, we have that, we, we everything boils down to negative 1.5 sine of 45 degrees is equal to negative 3 root 2 over 4 r of b with respect to ic uh, sine of 45 degrees and this yields um, r of b with respect to ic is equal to square root of 2 and if you do this in the j hat direction we get the same exact answer um, so we get 1.5 cos of 45 degrees is equal to 3 root 2 over 4 r of b with respect to ic cos of 45 degrees. And again, this yields the same result as expected uh, equals to root 2. And so we know that r of b with respect to ic is root 2. Um, so we can find the location of this instantaneous center of velocity uh, with respect to this um, coordinate system here because that distance was this. Um, now we need to add this distance here to get the full distance of this ICZB with respect to A, which is the center of our coordinate system. Um, so let's call that our instantaneous center um, and let's give it a vector. So this is a position vector is going to be equal to the radius of um, IC with respect to B plus the radius of B with respect to A. So again, this this the second vector starts from here, goes to here, then we're adding this second vector to get this full vector starting from A and going to the IC. Um, and since we have the opposite of this, we have B with respect to IC, we're going to switch the sign. Uh, so this is also equal to negative R of B with respect to IC plus R of B with respect to A. And if you plug in these values, which we have for, we've solved for all these radiuses before, radii before, um, we get um, the following negative 4 plus root 2 over 4 in the i hat direction. And we get negative 4 plus root 2 over 4 in the j hat direction. And so again, this is our instantaneous center and um, with respect to our coordinate system. Okay, now we can, now we have to solve, so let me box that answer in. Let me rewrite it and box it in.
Next up, we have to go back and solve for our angular velocity um, of uh, CD. And again, we can solve for this easily because um, we have that radius of the instantaneous center. Um, so uh, remember, um, this we in, for that second equation, so for uh, this equation, um, we have that uh, center. So we can solve for this because we know this. Um, so let's write that down. So this is from the j-hat direction. R of c with respect to ic is going to be equal to R of b with respect to ic uh, times sine of 45 degrees. And this is again given by um, the geometry of the problem. Um, and uh, what we do here is we just take the sine of 45 of the b with respect to ic radius, which we have, to get the other one, and then we add 1. And so this is going to be equal to root 2 sine 45 degrees plus 1. And this is going to be the magnitude of the radius of C with respect to IC, which is also um, going to be just in the negative J direction because it, or in the positive J direction because it points um, up vertically. And this plus 1 comes from, uh, so this, the first part with the sine of 45 is this height over here. And then from here to here, we add 1 because that's given in the problem over here. And so we get our resulting radius of C with respect to IC. It's going to be equal to 1 plus root 2 sine of 45 degrees in the j hat direction. And we plug that into our equation, which was 0 0.5 omega CD equals to 3 root 2 over 4 in the k hat direction cross product to 1 plus square root of 2 sine of 45 degrees in the j hat direction. And once you do this cross product, you get that omega cd is equal to negative 3 root 2 in the k hat direction. So again, our answer is negative, which means that what we assumed is actually the opposite direction of what it actually is. Um, and so in our, if we want to draw a more accurate diagram, um, VC here would actually point to the right, and omega CD is going in the counterclockwise direction. Uh, so this is, again, the way we got this was by plugging this radius here into the equation um, for uh, VC here. Okay, so we plug this in. We found this from geometry based on RB with respect to IC, and we solved for omega CD. So that this formula here is exactly the same as what I wrote out here. I just plugged in this omega term and this radius term to solve for this.